morning, guys. Dave Cameron at the Pathfinder School out here um, at the Forge again today. And what I wanted to do today was, you know, first of all, understand that I'm fairly new to blacksmithing. I've done a lot of stuff, you know, around fires with metal, you know, using my axe head on rocks and railroad ties and things like that. But as far as actually using a forge with coal, things like that, to do actual forging work, I'm fairly new. I've got a railroad tie type anvil here that was made for a farrier. I'm sure um, because of the size, but because it's so small, being 15 pounds, it's very light and portable, which is good and something that I would consider I would want in my longer term sustainability type equipment because it's portable. Now, because I've got it nailed to a stump for knee forging by a fire, it is not really conducive or the best for what I'm doing here. It's a little higher, a little low, depending on where I put it. Right now, it's a little high being up on this picnic table bench, but that's okay. I've got a 100-pound anvil I'm going to pick up later uh, next week that I'll mount permanently on something here at my permanent forging area underneath this overhang, and then I'll carry this back down to my hunter's camp where I'm going to use it. Um, other equipment, you're going to need a couple different sets of tongs, and I've actually got commercially purchased tongs right here. These are farrier-type tongs, and they work okay. But, you know, I found this $2 pair of pliers at a flea market. I paid two bucks for them, and it looks to me like someone has already used these for forging. They have good flat jaws on them. Someone has bent the handles out on them and made them very comfortable to grip, so they work really good for holding on to your metal. They need to be greased a little bit, but they're not too bad off. You know, any sledgehammer will work that you can buy. You can buy them very cheap at a place like Track Supply, or you can go all out like I did and buy this uh, Swedish forging hammer, and I can't even pronounce the name of this thing. Pettinghaus, I think, is the name of it. And I just bought this because I wanted, you know, I'm sorry, it's made in France, excuse me, not Sweden. And I just wanted one piece of equipment, you know, that was very traditional and, you know, a little bit more high end that I could use to do some forging with. I also use just regular sledgehammers and ball peen hammers as well. And I also use my axe head when I'm out, you know, by the hunter's camp doing this by fire. So you don't have to have a bunch of fancy equipment necessarily. And this forge, and the reason I made this video this morning was kind of walk you through this forge. I've got a buffalo blower right here that I actually got for $100 with the forge. Now this blower has since the bearings have went out a little bit on it. It slips right here at the end. There's a slip in it right there, and that's because the bearings are shot. So I'm going to put some new bearings on it. But you just attach a hose to the outlet, and you bring that into your forge, and that's what blows air into the bottom of your forge. And your forge just is a place, a sturdy place to hold, hold your coals or hold your fire that's got a pot in it where you build your forging fire. And you can use wood, you can use charcoal, you can use forging coal, you can use a lot of things to forge with, but I've just been using charcoal for my experiments lately um, that I bought from an Amish blacksmith. So let's talk about getting this forge fired up. First of all, because I don't have the blower, what I've gone to for the time being is just a $10 hair dryer. And I got this suggestion from a guy on the web. I, get a, I learn a lot of things. Um, off my YouTube videos, a lot of people send me suggestions and comments and PMs on how to do things easier, how to do things better. And this is just plugged into the electrical socket on this overhang and it blows constant air. So that makes it number one a lot easier because you don't have to stand there and crank or have someone to crank if you have the luxury of electricity. And it also gives you that constant air while you're working at the forge. So what I do with that is I just took a piece of metal tubing, same piece of metal tubing that I had used with this hand blower, and I connect it into the front of this opening, and all this is a piece of flexible hose from a shop back, and then I just plug that into the bottom of the forge, and there's a hole down here on the bottom of that forge, let's see if I try to zoom in on it for you, that I plug that into right there at the bottom. You've got a, a dump port at the bottom of that, it's like a T intersection there, and then you've got an inlet for your air, and then you dump your clinkers or your hard coal and things like that pieces of chunks of metal and things like that to fall off into the pot, go down into that and you dump it at the end of the day or the next time you forge. So let's talk about heating this thing up. The first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to get this camera set for you guys. You can see that open pot in there very similar to a brake drum where you'd make a simple brake drum type forge. The Folgers coffee can has my coal in it. I generally start with about a coffee can of coal for the projects that I'm working with, and this is what I use to dump it in there with. So what I generally do is I'll take four or five sheets of just newspaper, and this is just some ad magazine for like RV and, and ATV sales, things like that, something you pick up free 
at the gas station so it didn't cost anything. And I'll rip up four or five sheets of this and they say you can use four or five sheets of newspaper or anything like that and this basically is free newspaper. And I put that in the bottom down there crumpled up. Get a couple more sheets of it here. And what I'm going to do is crumple that up and then I'm going to light it on fire. Okay, just leave that. Just try to, instead of trying to separate it. Now I'm going to put this down in here but I'm going to light it on fire with my lighter over here first. And then I'm going to turn it on itself so the fire is rising up. Just like that. Okay. Then what I generally will do is I'll go ahead and start my airflow by plugging in my hair dryer or turning on my turning on my blower and you can see what that's doing. And now I'll take some of this old coal that I've got from the last time I forged and I'll put it on top of that. Just like that. Then I'll take new coal and sprinkle that on. And it's going to take this thing a little while now. And I'm kind of trying to make a little volcano there with an air hole in the middle. Because basically I am suffocating out of oxygen right now. And it's going to take a little while for that to heat up. So now I just have to sit and wait till the smoke clears and it becomes flame. Okay, so now we got flame coming out of our forge, and this is kind of where we need to get to before we can start. And now we can kind of look and we can kind of form our hole in here where we're going to stick our metal into. And start to get our pot set up right for forging. And it's just going to take a little time to get that coal burnt nice and hot and red. I think this is just something that you have to get used to playing with a little at a time. Now what I'll generally do is I'll try to build up around that to hold that heat in. With some of the material I've got left in here from a past forging. Keep it opened up so the flames rising through it. And in about another 10 minutes we'll be ready to start working. Okay, so real quick, let's talk about some of the equipment that we're using in this common man type forge, okay? And again, I don't have a lot of money in this thing. This anvil came off of eBay. Um, it was $80, but it's a really, really nice portable anvil. Again, that's why I like it, nice and portable. I have a small four-inch bench vise here that just screws on like a C-clamp. Again, very portable. In a permanent forging situation, when I set this thing up permanent, I'm going to want something bigger than this. A Trooper two-pound cross-peen hammer from Track Supply probably cost eight dollars. Then I've got this two-dollar set of tongs here, and that's really the majority of what I need, other than a couple files and things to really start doing some work. Now, I've got a couple other pairs of tongs here that cost considerably more money than a two dollars, but you don't have to have these. I have this more expensive forging type hammer, again, not a necessity. One of the great things about forging is that you learn to make your own tools. And one of the things that we're going to work on soon is I've got this old ball hitch, this trailer hitch, I picked up at the same flea market for a dollar. And unlike the newer trailer hitches, it doesn't have a flat on the top, it's completely round. And I'm going to try to pound this, heat it up and pound it down so that it fits in my hardy hole. And that will give me a rounding device so that I can make spoons, lead ladles, and things of that nature by forming them around this. It gives me a form to use for making concavities in metal. Okay, So I'm going to make my own tool out of that instead of spending the $80 it would cost to buy a pre-made hardy tool for that purpose. Again, you know, forge materials, rebar. Rebar, old files, all of this kind of stuff. If you want high carbon steel for knives, old files. If you want medium carbon stuff to use for small projects, rebar is really good. I got these files for 50 cents a piece at a flea market. I bought about 40 of them. And I got the rebar for 99 cents a piece at a lumber yard. So the stuff is not expensive to buy to work on projects. And blacksmithing is a very, very good self-reliant skill. Blacksmiths were some of the most sought after people as far as tradesmen 
all along the frontier because they did everything from fix people's gun locks and gun mechanisms to making the tools that they used to farm with to making the hinges on their front doors that are cabins. So blacksmiths did all of that stuff. And blacksmithing is an age-old artesian type craft that everyone should know. Okay guys, so that was just a quick overview of the forge, how it works, how I've got it set up here temporarily, and some of the tools that I'm using that are common man to affect my forging. Other things that you're going to need are some 20 mule team borax for forge welding. We'll talk about that in the video. Some type of a brush, a metal brush, and I'll show you one of those on another video as well. Again, not expensive. You can buy them for three or four bucks at a hardware store. A lot of times you can find them used at flea markets for a dollar. 20 mule team borax isn't very expensive for a big giant box of it. It will last you a long time, and it's multifunctional around the camp for a lot of things other than just forge welding. So, I appreciate you joining me for this video. I thank you for all your views, all your support, everything that you do for me, for my school, and for my family. I'll be back with another video in this series as soon as I can.